Well, good morning. Happy Thursday. Welcome to Devotion Morning. Uh, I got my Bible here, but uh, this is my old worn out Bible. I've had this one, oh man, for almost, uh, I think, 38 years. It was given to me when I was confirmed. Uh, the reason why, uh, the devotion I had today was actually a lesson we had a few weeks ago from uh, one of our readings uh, before we hit the season of Advent, but it was a powerful one uh, from Colossians. Now, it was also a theme of our National Youth Gathering. As we went down there, it was uh, in all things, and it was all things come together, all things are in Christ. All things find their beginning, all find, things find their end, all things in Jesus. And it was a great youth gathering that we had, uh, wonderful concerts, great activities. The kids that we had had a wonderful time, got to meet a lot of, uh, of girls, and they, they enjoyed that uh, immensely, along with playing basketball and games and just having a, a wonderful time. But before I digress, uh, good morning, Sue. It's good to see you on here as well, uh, as well as Gail. I got to see Sue yesterday for her birthday as she turned, uh, we'll say, 48 uh, in, a, in a little bit of a joking way. But uh, today's devotion is where it all comes together. Now, as we are in the season of Advent, we hear Jesus as the Prince of Peace. Uh, last week, we heard from Isaiah about how he brings peace. And this week, we get some wonderful visuals from Isaiah of what that peace will look like, something that's almost impossible for us to fathom. A fattened calf laying with a, with a lion, uh, how we have sheep and lambs with wolves and children playing with uh, venomous snakes. And yet, through all of this, uh, there is nothing to worry about because sin and all the effects of sin have now been destroyed. We are now in the new heavens and new earth. That's the peace that Isaiah gives. But here in this world, we don't experience much peace. We have a lot of division between people. We have division between uh, creation, animals, uh, venomous snakes and people. We see them, we run away, we want to get them out of our yards. Uh, and so we got to realize that truly it is in Christ where all things come together in Christ, where all things find true peace. Uh, thanks, Tim. I'll try to stay warm. I'm wearing a more of a flannel shirt today. But the text I want to share with you is from Colossians 1, verses 19 to 20. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. This devotion is one that uh, is done by Lutheran Hour Ministries. If you haven't uh, uh, read them or listened to them before, please do. Uh, but this is where we also then follow up uh, that for in Christ, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things. Whether in heaven and earth, making, making peace by the blood of his cross. Sorry, I got stumbled there. I was reading uh, the wrong part. Uh, so the peace that we have through the blood of Jesus Christ, and he reconciles all things. So the young church in Colossae, which is who Paul's writing to here, it didn't have peace. <laughs> Not very different than our churches today, right? They were on the brink of a breakup because some false teachers were Gnostics, means that they were teaching that there was a higher spiritual world and a lower material world. Uh, think back to the Greek gods and goddesses. The Gnostics, they also denied that Jesus the Jesus who walked this earth, the Jesus who died on the cross, and that this Jesus, that he was ever fully divine, that he was fully God. It's not the gospel good news that Jesus is just half God or just a holy role model, you know, or like a, a, a Greek goddess, if you would. Uh, you see, the Jesus you see in the Bible is human. He is totally human, but here's the thing. He's also not only a man, he's totally God. One say 100% man, 100% God. And so in Jesus, the man who walked the earth, the man who suffered and died on the cross, the man who rose again, we find the fullness of God. We find the image of God. We find the words of God. So when we look upon Jesus, when we listen to the words of Jesus, it's the voice of God that we hear in our ears. Now, Jesus is God begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages. And Jesus is man, born of the substance of his mother, the Virgin Mary, in this age. It takes the one in whom all things hold together to bring true reconciliation and peace on earth. There was a professor back in Concordia, his name was Jack Preuss, and he died several months ago. But he wrote a book called Just Words. And in it, he writes, reconciliation signals a solution to the separation between people. Peace calls attention to this resolution, to the friction between 
and within people and how we desperately need both reconciliation and peace. Well, that is what Jesus gives. Reconciliation through his cross, peace through his cross. I mean, think about our culture today and how divided we are politically, socially, economically. Uh, when you think about the extent to which our pieces just don't come together for so many of us, there's friction all around and it afflicts us more than just a, a fix that we can do. I mean, I watch enough of the news, not a lot, but some, and it seems like there's always division, there's always fighting, whether it's in our uh, state government, whether it's our national government, whether it's in our local government, trying to say, well, if we do this, we will fix all this, things will be better, and yet everything seems to get so much worse. You see, it took the fullness of God dwelling in the person of Jesus to do the work of saving us. It took the one who fully took on our human nature, and yet without sin, and that's who we have in Jesus. You see, that peace that I mentioned that Isaiah wrote about, it's that peace that we can only find in Christ. As much as we think that human beings can bring about solutions to the world's problems, can stop global warming, can improve the economy, can resolve any sort of cancer or illness or disease, now all this can only be attained and accomplished in Christ and through Christ, which means if you look at this world today, you have enough Christian churches around there, there's enough arguments and divisions because in this world we will never have true peace. We'll never find uh, restoration of all these things. It's only when we look forward to the new heaven and the new earth, the glory that is to be revealed in Christ's second advent when he returns to bring us into a, his heavenly kingdom. And so it's then that we look forward to. Until then, though, we still listen we listen to the words of Jesus. We seek to follow the words of Jesus. We seek to model the words of Jesus, the actions of Jesus to others in our lives, knowing that we'll never have true peace in this world, never knowing that we'll never be able to uh, resolve cancers and illness and strokes and pains and, and struggles, knowing that we're not gonna be able to find world peace or anything like that, but knowing that through us, we might be able to have some impact, some way of sharing that peace that will come here in the lives of others. Maybe we can follow that prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, that we can be an instrument of peace, even though in a very small way. Strive to do that, knowing that that full peace will never be fully realized, but in a small manner, we might be able to uh, help others experience and know and hear the words of our Savior, the one through whom all things hold together, the one who pieces all things together, the one who holds all together, the one through whom all was created, the one through whom all is redeemed. And so today I'd like to, you to consider how the peace that you know in Christ, that peace that is a future reality and also a present one, how you might be able to reflect and show that in your life today. Let's bow our heads in prayer. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the ways that you have become for us, the reconciliation that we need in life, for all the ways you bring peace to all the brokenness in our world. We pray, Lord, that you might inspire us by your spirit, that we might become reconcilers and peacemakers for the sake of you. You are the light of the world, and you all hold together, and you all find our completeness. In your precious name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me this morning. Sorry if I seem a little uh, scattered. Uh, we had a wonderful worship yesterday, and uh, hopefully if you're able to join us, whether in person or online, a uh, great time. Uh, this week we have our church cleanup day on Saturday morning at 9 a.m., and then we have our second week of Advent services when we start to get introduced to the Advent person, John the Baptist. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Wonderful message, one that we're going to be focusing on this weekend. But until then, have a wonderful day in the Lord. Share the peace that you know in Christ. Share the love and the, uh, and the, and the redemption that you know in Jesus. And make an impact in the lives of others around you. Have a wonderful day. Know that I love you and aloha.